So we've worked through the split and we've worked through aggregate a little bit, but, and we've also talked about lambda functions, which are really important. We're gonna continue working with lambda functions um, in, these, uh, in this last video or two when we are talking about uh, the filter function, and, or excuse me, the dot filter method as well as the dot transform method. Um, in this video, we are going to focus in on dot filter. I have gone ahead and I have changed up my data here. And again, we're just dealing with some fake toy data that I've sort of made up off the top of my head. And we can see that this data is really um, a collection of temperature readings across four different cities. And it looks like I've only taken temperature readings for one day for each city. And I've taken the temperature reading at morning, noon, and night. And these temperatures, they look to be in Fahrenheit. And if I had to take a guess, I would say this is at some point in the fall or, or maybe the early spring based on the temperatures in this data frame. Now, before I get uh, too much further, I actually want to go ahead and change the name of this to temps, and I'll want to change this to temps as well. We can largely see that the structure of our data frame is the same, and the grouped by uh, the group by call that I'm going to make is also the same. Uh, this time, I'm going to be grouping by city as opposed to grouping by uh, type as I was before and before we get too much further along let's just go ahead and take a look at all of these groups and I'm going to do so by go ahead and running my uh, my for loop for name group in grouped temps print name print group and I can see once again uh, the initial index numbers of my data frame have been maintained I can see that again the column which I have grouped by, uh, I have grouped by the city. It has sorted by that column. All of those columns were string. It's put those in alphabetical order, and it has uh, displayed those temperatures. Now, just for the sake of checking it out, right? Um, if we were working with this, if this was a real data set, it might for some reason be interesting to me not only to break down these temperatures in terms of which city each of they were taken in, but also by which time they were taken in. So if I go ahead and switch my column to group by time as opposed to group by city, give that a save, clear up my input, give that file another run, Right, I can see here again, now I have all my morning times grouped, my night times and my noon times grouped, uh, regardless of the city. And um, I could, it wouldn't be very valuable, but I think theoretically, right, I could group by both of these at the same time. Um, but there's only one entry for each of those. And that's uh, not particularly insightful. But if I had multiple days readings from each city, this might be an appropriate approach where I could look at all of my Austin mornings, all of my Denver mornings, all of my New York City mornings, so on and so forth. But for the sake of this exercise, let's go back where we started and just uh, continue to group by city. I'm going to clear out my uh, output here and go back just to take a look at that. Now, we were, we've were we got this thing split and we've talked about apply, we've talked about lambda functions. Now, how can we use that to filter? And in this shape, in this camp, uh, in this case, excuse me, we're going to want to use this grouped dot filter. Um, Right. We could also right if I didn't have this group by saved to a variable, this would be uh, simply temps dot group by dot filter. And I'm doing the same exact thing. And um, I might do this if I weren't going to do more than one filter or, or more than one. Um, you will 
typically see uh, a group by that saved to a variable and then several filters, transformations, that sort of thing uh, run on it. Now, so I'm going to go ahead and back this out. Um, I've got this group temps.filter that will have parentheses as we're used to. I'm also go ahead and going to put my print statement back here so we can look at what we're doing. And I'm going to go over here, clean out my input before we go any further. Now, before we talked about Lambda functions, and this is a great place to use them. Filter is looking for a parameter that is a function. And in this case, that function is uh, that we are going to use is going to be um, a Lambda function. And specifically, since we only have one numerical column that we're actually going to uh, do analysis on, um, that lambda function is going to work on the temperature or temp column. Now, in general, right, if I had more than one uh, single uh, temperature column, I could just specify which column I'm talking about specifically. And um, in general, um, when we write a lambda function and I say uh, lambda with x as my parameter, when I talk about x as my parameter, it sort of refers to the entire row. And if I go ahead and print this out, I can see that when I use the stop filter method, I don't have any conditions to filter by in my lambda function, so it's not filtering anything out. And I actually run this print uh, statement inside of my function. And we can see that each row, x represents the entire row. So maybe if I only wanted to uh, look at uh, the temp column, right, we can index that with the name. Um, the way we index so many other things um, in Python or in Pandas, right? And I could look at just the temp, I could look at just the city, so on and so forth. Um, in general, if you do not specify a column and you put in some sort of function that in its nature is supposed to uh, work on a numerical value and you don't specify which column, which numerical value that you're going to operate on, it will try and apply it to all of the numerical columns and return that uh, filter based on all of them. But since I've only got one numerical column here, uh, I don't need to specify the one that I'm talking about. I can simply refer to X. Now, say for example, I'm curious to learn which of my cities on the day that these temperatures were taken uh, over the course of the day, the three temperatures taken maintained an average temperature that was greater than 53 degrees. 53, relatively arbitrary, um, just something I've taken. And I'm going to say 50, x dot mean is greater than 53. Now, before we actually uh, execute this, right, it's important to know, note that if you're looking to filter out rows, that are based on some condition that is not related to the group, there's no need to use group by, right? You can use regular square bracket indexing with conditions to create a, uh, a series Boolean or, or a vector Boolean, um, right? To do Boolean masking, to maybe pull out all of the temperatures that were uh, less than 68 degrees, for example. But in this case, we're specifically looking to filter based on some sort of aggregation value. So when we do transform or we do filter, um, we're going to use an aggregate filter, or excuse me, an aggregate value in general. If we weren't using an aggregate uh, calculation of some point, there's no uh, motivation to actually use this group by method. But what I've got here, right, I'm saying that I want to filter out any of the rows that are in groups that have a mean temperature of greater than 53 amongst all the data points for that group. I'll go ahead and give that file a save. I can come over here again, clear out 
my console run and it looks like once I combine that data frame back together, I have Austin and San Francisco as the only two cities which have a mean temperature over the course of the day of greater than 53 degrees. Now, here we can use any of the standard built-in functions that we talked about. Um, I haven't checked any of these standard deviations. Um, looking at them looks like maybe six might be a decent delimiter um, let's see what that filters out if any um, and it actually filters out the same thing interestingly enough um, let's see if i actually change this sign to less than or equal to it should give me the other two cities and i can see it actually does do that any of the cities which had a standard deviation of less than or equal to six are um, left and everything that does not meet my condition has been filtered out. So here's how we can actually use that lambda function inside the dot filter method as a parameter to do some sort of filtration on our data frame, uh, data frame based on some group. In the next video, we'll talk about the very last thing, and that is transform. And we will also be using uh, some of these aggregate functions as well as our lambda functions to help us accomplish that. And I'll see you in the next video.